Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Okay, let's take a few moments now and uh, review some of the variations that occur on these cuspids. And we'll also go through and review the different spotting characteristics and associated terminology. Make a couple sketches for you, and we'll have a little quiz on her. This is a variation of maxillary canines, and you see they can get very significantly different in size. Generally speaking, our maxillary canines are one of the largest uh, single rooted teeth in the mouth. Uh, on this particular one here, we've got a uh, notch at the cervical. You'll see this on a few of the teeth. This is not the usual forcep uh, abrasion that is, or the forcep crushing, I should say, that occurs when we extract the teeth. This is called a, a cervical erosion, and its uh, actual cause or etiology is sometimes felt to be unknown, but uh, oftentimes thought to be associated with vigorous scrubbing with a toothbrush was a heavy abrasive for many years. One of the things that occurs on the cuspids that gets confusing sometimes is the wear patterns. Sometimes these will wear, and as they wear, remember we talked about the wear pattern on the incisors, and we'll review this with you. We get the wearing of the cuspid, and we'll get dentin showing through in just one isolated area in the center, and we don't get this long ribbon. If we get a further wear on it, we may have a, a wear that will be continuous across the whole tooth, but it'll generally be wider through the center of the tooth, and oftentimes we'll start picking up the staining of the secondary dentin right in the center of the tooth. And again, we can compare this type of a, a wear pattern with our incisors. The wear pattern on, on our incisors will have a tendency to be more ribbon-shaped, whereas in our cuspids, it'll have a tendency to be wide, in the middle portion of the tooth and narrows as it goes towards the mesial and distal thirds of the tooth. Sometimes this can become quite confusing and when you look at you know a tooth like this you say well we got an incisor which incisor is it and as you start to check it you might figure it's a mandibular lateral or what have you but if you were to start checking the wear pattern on it you'd find that uh, again we're worn heaviest through the center where we've got our incisal dentin, in fact, is our secondary dentin showing through right in the middle there, and it narrows it down our wear pattern as we come towards the mesial and distal. So sometimes that wear pattern will help you uh, identify some of these teeth as they are wearing down on you. We could uh, take a minute and uh, review some of our uh, basic differences in these teeth. We've got uh, on our maxillary characteristics that are most common to the maxillary is the large cingulum. That's probably the most prominent point in the maxillary is the large cingulum. We've got a height of contour which is a little higher on the labial surface and it is a little sharper roll right at the cemento enamel junction. So we've kind of got a break in our outline form as we come down onto the, uh, let's see if I can turn this show it a little better here, on our labial surface. We also have the shorter crown in proportion to the root, and it's a little wider crown in proportion to the root than what our mandibular cuspids are. Our mandibular cuspids characterized by having a lower height of contour on the labial and blending in quite well with the root, not having a sharp, heavy roll at the CE junction, and having a rather significantly smaller cingulum on this. Let me turn it around this way for you. Our cingulum is proportionally smaller. Sometimes this concavity on the lingual here will get more prominent. On the mandibular, I might point out that we still have a lingual ridge with two separate fossas, our mesial lingual fossa and distal lingual fossa. Sometimes this ridge is not real prominent, and it all appears to be one huge fossa. Well, we, depending on uh, the terminology, you can just call it a, a lingual fossa, or we can divide it into a mesial and distal lingual fossas. 
Let's go to some sketches here, and I'll sketch this a little bit for you. If we were to look at the mandibular in outline form here, we generally find an outline form somewhat in this nature here, where we've got our cemento enamel junction. This will vary somewhat from our maxillary. As much as with our maxillary, we get more of a outline forms much in this manner here, where we've got a heavier notch at the cemento enamel junction. We've got a height of contour a little larger. We've got a little heavier cingulum on it, a little straighter root, whereas this appears to be kind of evenly. Sometimes this has been called fish-shaped in so much as it an outline form resembles a fish, much smaller cingulum, closer in height of contour to the cervical, on both the labial and the lingual. Uh, generally speaking, our cusps will be centered close to being over the center of the root. If we were to sketch a labial view, we would be looking to see that we had a higher height of contour on the mesial and a rounder, more cervical height of contour on the distal. We would expect that we would have a shorter mesial cusp bridge and a longer distal cusp bridge. If we were comparing it to a mandibular, we would anticipate that the mandibular would be a little longer in proportion, and the crown would be a little bit more over the root, and we wouldn't be quite as broad uh, mesially distally. It would be a little longer cervically incisally or towards our cusp tip here. These would be the basic types of uh, things we would be looking for in sketches, be heights of contours, uh, lengths of marginal ridges, our cervical lines, total widths of crowns and things of this nature. Okay, we ready for a little quiz here? Let's see what we've learned. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.